Hey guys, Jay from Lead Ammunition here. Uh, I've been uh, wanting to do something like this for a while. Uh, this is a going to be a two-part video. Uh, always remember your coffee. I'm going to need it for this one. Okay, for a while now, everybody knows that the takedown lever area of the PS90 stock will fail. Uh, there'll be a link in the description to my failure points of the PS90 stock. Uh, but primarily where this takedown button is, the material shaves on the inside here. And then under recoil, the receiver pops out the front. Uh, the biggest reason for this is this is an ancient polymer blend. Unlike the uh, FSN, uh, where the uh, Mark II has an updated polymer and a much stronger, denser polymer, this is the same early 90s polymer. FN has been lazy, never updated it. And this failure point has been a well-known for over decades failure point. And normally FN just, if it's a law enforcement agency, someplace like that, uh, when the armor gets certified and everything, he just gets a case of these uh, stocks, and they just swap the stocks in and out when they, when they start to uh, malfunction. Now, the problem comes is us. If you want to uh, replace your stock, you have to send it in for warranty, if FN will warranty it. Um, if not, you have to try and buy a stock, and unfortunately, uh, the one source for FN parts is always out of stock because FN doesn't ship parts. So these have been out of stock for now for like, I don't know, a couple of years or so. Like most 5.7 parts. And there's some other stuff I'm going to be doing uh, uh, or, or on the PS90 for parts-wise also for you guys. Uh, but basically, so uh, a real issue comes into play is if you've SBR'd your PS90, the stock malfunctions, you send it back to FN. FN will say, you altered your rifle. We will not honor our warranty, and you're screwed. So you have to go out and somehow find another stock pay a bunch of money for it, and you're just SOL. All right, I came up with an initial fix years ago where we actually machined out this button area. We replaced it with a stainless steel machined section with cap head bolts that came in from the sides. It worked really great, incredibly expensive. Even now, with the cost of everything that we have uh, uh, right now, with the, uh, the cost of everything going up, it's still a, a, a three, four hundred dollar job to do that. So for me, it was it really wasn't cost effective, and it wasn't simple. For those of you who have followed uh, me long enough uh, over the years, over the well, well over a decade now, you know I like clean, simple, basic designs. Shit that works, and I'm never happy with something until I get it to that point. And this is why, in the past, sometimes it's taken EA you know, uh, uh, a lot longer than, like, say, somebody else would bring something out for a 1911 because I want to get it just the way I want it, and I want it to get it so it works. So what I did on one of our mule guns, now uh, this particular one's got our front and rear quick disconnect. Oh, and somebody asked one time, um, doesn't this, and it's got our extended charging handle, doesn't this get in the way? Well, the problem, uh, no, because we use actual true Magpul spec sockets, so there's 90-degree locks on here so when you lock into place it's not going to hit the charging handle but anyhow uh, if you notice uh, this like I said this is one of our mule guns uh, this has uh, one of our uh, ring sights on it uh, sorry about that I was uh, waving this around and uh, knocked down some of the crap I'm going to be showing you in a minute uh, I came up with a fix uh, for a while ago for this I took and ran a bolt in the front hole of the receiver into the stock uh, kind of a dirty, quick fix. It works, it holds it together, but it's not something really very permanent, and it's not something where you can regularly take it apart and put it back together without ruining the uh, polymer. So I came up with something new. I came up with a uh, better design. And again, coffee. Mm. And remember, folks, the more elite ammunition products you buy, the more money Carthage College makes. As most of you know, there's an opening on the front of the stock here. Okay? That little divot right there. That's where I run that screw into after I drilled up the hole a little bit. Well, I'm coming out with a full kit. Now, this full kit, you'll be able to buy it from us and do it yourself, or you'll be able to send it to me for a fee and have me do your stock for you. Um, it's going to be kind of simple, but if you don't feel comfortable, again, you can always send it to me, have me do Essentially what this kit is, is you are actually going to drill this hole out 
a little bit, I'm going to make it a little larger, and you're going to install this insert. All right, I'll probably have some fancier slide pictures here once I edit the video. Uh, basically, you're going to insert, you're going to drill out the hole, you're going to insert this threaded sleeve. Now, this is designed to thread in to soft metals like aluminum and stay in there. We're also going to add a little adhesive, too, just to make it easier. That's actually going to thread into the stock. Once it's threaded into the stock, you will have this little 3 millimeter hex head M4 screw, and it will thread in and out of this insert, making it a nice, permanent, and repeatable procedure to hold your stock in. Now, there's a lot of guys out there that uh, have these stocks that they can't use or they waiting on uh, uh, stocks to come into stock and FN and they haven't come in so that's what uh, that was the motivation for me to make this a couple people found out about this quick and dirty trick and they asked me if I could put together a kit now basically the kit is going to come with the following items you're going to have your insert you're going to have your M4 with washer you're going to have your three millimeter Allen key you're going to have a short for, and this one you're going to use, this is what you're going to actually use to install the insert. You're going to set this all the way into the insert. If you notice, unlike the other one, this one doesn't thread all the way through the insert. And you're going to use this to drive the insert into the stock. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to make a second video going into detail on how to do this. And I'm actually going to take this heavily, ablu heavily abused mule stock and I'm going to do it to this stock in real time. Uh, that way you'll have a nice permanent fix for the takedown button issue. Uh, it's also be a reliability issue even if you're not having issues with your takedown button but you're running a lot of suppressed stuff or you want to run a suppressed barrel shroud which uh, that's coming out and you don't want to run the risk of having a stock separation you can install this kit and make it much more permanent also on a complete side note since the ps90 guys are watching everybody has been screaming forever for these specific small little clips to come on here they're a metric size the diameter of the wire is metric the diameter of them is metric and it's not standard it's not cataloged by anybody anywhere in the damn world i know i've looked at catalog after catalog after catalog so after a bunch of posts on Facebook, a bunch of messages, a bunch of reposts and stuff, I'm going to have a run of the little C-clips here made, and they will be up on the website. I'm waiting. Um, uh, it should be, hopefully, maybe three, four weeks, I'll have those little clip springs up on, on the website. All right, but you'll be able to install this kit and bring your stock back to life. All right, guys, if you have any questions or whatever, just uh, put them down here. If there's anything I didn't cover, again, please uh, like, subscribe get for notifications. Post a comment down there and also look for the upcoming installation and how-to video on this product. And again, don't ever forget your coffee. Have a good day.